Hello again, welcome back everyone. Liquor Hound here with you. Thank you for joining me for another year-end recap or best of video. And today I'm going to be taking a look at all the spirits that really impressed me this year. So we're going to go ahead and get started because we got a lot of bottles to get through. Starting with Single Malt Scotch of the Year. That's going to go directly to Ardebeg Kelpie Committee release. Now the Ardebeg Kelpie Committee was bottled at 51.7% ABV, retailed at about $120, somewhere in there. And when you go to the store and you see Ardebeg Kelpie and it's in a dark label, not this tan, that's the regular release. That's not what this is. You're looking for the committee version. And the sad thing is they both sell about the same price. So really look for this one if you're going to do that. If you can't find this one, then maybe look for this one. The Portiskeg 110 proof. The Portiskeg single malt is actually a Colila being bottled under that Portiskeg name. Um... 110 proof, that's a big number considering it's only about $65 for this one. It is young Colila, probably seven, eight year old, but it is very, very tasty. And I actually did a review on this one, so you can always go back and watch that. The one thing I will say is that once I opened it, it really tended to mellow out with some time. So uh, give this bottle time, you know, drink it down past the shoulder, let it oxidize for a month or so, and then you'll notice that the intensity, that 110, it won't it'll, be, it'll feel it'll drink a little softer than the 110 as it starts to oxidize another one that really loves to breathe and oxidize is this one the local barley 11 year old from springbank this one i had high hopes for when it came out simply because the old springbank 16 isla uh, local barley was very very tasty so when this one dropped i was like got to try it tasted it it felt a little bit out of balance it is bottled at 53.1 percent abv for about a hundred dollars and all I did was, again, drink it down past the shoulder, let it sit for a while. And this one took a while. This one took about three to four months of oxidizing to let that spice recede. But now it tastes really, really good, and it deserves to be up in here in this lineup. All right, moving on. Blended Scotch of the Year. All right, that's going to go to Compass Box, the Spice Tree Extravaganza. Now, most people throughout the country may have gotten this last year. Us here in Texas, we didn't get it until early 2017, so I had to go ahead and put this in there. Now, John Glazier did a great job on this one because, like I said, about $100, $110, you're getting a really nice blend. It's got a really good honeyed malt base, a little bit of citrus or a citrus peel type aspect, mulling spices, that type thing going on. Very, very tasty. Balanced oak. Really good job there. If you can't find that one, Maybe you can look for this one, the Big Smoke 60. This is a 120 proof uh, blend of Isla malts. So no grain whiskey in it. It's all single malt distilleries on Isla. As you can tell by the color, it's all ex-bourbon maturation. Um, the majority of the base is probably Ardbeg, and it's just a very good pour for about $65. All right. Bourbon of the year goes to Joseph Magnus, the Cigar Blend. That's the bottle we have right here. Now, the Cigar Blend is a little pricey at about $150, but considering what it is and what they do to it, I think it's actually worth it. For that $150, you're getting a blend of 11 and 18-year-old bourbons finished in Armagnac casks. That's right. Very unusual. And this happens to be batch two. Batch two was more Armagnac influenced than even batch one. I actually didn't get to taste batch three, but batch four and five were just a little bit smidge knocked down on viscosity than one and two, and the Armagnac was pretty balanced. So if you don't have any of them in your collection, they might be worth adding, but my personal favorites were one and two. All right. Now, if you can't find this one, maybe Mayor Pingree may be on a shelf near you. Mayor Pingree's 10-year-old bourbon is basically it's they're doing what Smooth Ambler was doing and it still is doing which is bottling mgp at cast strength uh, this one happens to be a benny's single barrel selection but i have had non-store picks versions of mayor pingree 10 and they are equally as good as this one for only 80 dollars this is a really really solid buy out there okay now a little service announcement <laughs> we'll call it that may uh, the makers mark private select I wanted to show you this one because everybody sees these. They are everywhere. A lot of stores do store picks of it. But the thing that I want everybody to know is when you go out there and you see them, because they do what it is, is it's basically Maker's Cast Strength finished with a combination of 10 different staves, and the store gets to choose which staves they choose, what they want in there. Could be anything from uh, Pure American to 
toasted and seared staves and mocha staves, French oak, uh, spicy French oak staves, anyway, stuff like that. Uh, but the thing, the reason I wanted to show this to you was when I was at the distillery and Bill Samuels Jr. picked this bottle and this barrel, it was just simply 10 Makers 46 staves. That's it. He didn't trick it up very much. And that's what I'm trying to tell you when you go out there and you see these. Look for the ones that have maybe the majority makers 46. And then if they want to throw in some mocha staves, that always seems to work pretty well. Give it a little chocolate note to it. Um, but when they start adding that spice staves and stuff like that, mm, we don't need more spice in our bourbon. Anyway, $65 for about that one. Good, good, solid pick. This one, even better though. This is going to be the Colonel E.H. Taylor Barrel Proof. Now, the E.H. Taylor Barrel Proof for this year was bottled at 128.1 proof and is known as Batch 8. This one was solid from day one. The first time I cracked this bottle, I was really impressed with how it didn't show. It didn't taste like the 128.1. It was very, very balanced. A lot of brown sugar and caramel sweetness to it. Uh, probably the best E.H. Taylor Barrel Proof that I've had to date. Uh, is this one because like I said it didn't need anything matter of fact I started gassing it right away because I did not want it to oxidize so if you happen to see an E.H. Taylor barrel proof out on the shelf and it's 128.1 price should be around 75 85 somewhere in there it's worth picking up even if that was a hundred dollars that bottling if that was a hundred dollars I'd pick it up all right rye whiskey of the year now rye whiskey this was another category that was super lean this year Yes, I got to taste the Kentucky Owl. I got to taste the Michter's Toasted Barrel Rise and all that. But they just, they were not there for the value for me. Uh, Kentucky Owl Rye to me tasted like about a $70 rye. But if they wanted a lot more than that, so that's not going to be up in here. Now, this one, the Whistle Pig single barrels that you see out there usually run about $70. They're usually store picks. This happens to be a Specs pick bottled at 116 proof is amazing very very viscous oily mouth coating rye um, good balance of that rye floral fruit characteristic without having a lot of dill so that one for seventy dollars to me i'll take that all day long over some of those more expensive ryes now another bottle if you can't find a good store pick and the one thing about the whistle pick store picks i always recommend if you go to a store and they have their own pick usually they'll let you taste it so see if you can try it first, because some of those whistle pigs will have dill on them. And when they do that, I'm not really that interested. But if you taste it and you really enjoy it, pick up a bottle or two. Another one, High West Double Rye, coming to us from NASA Liquor there in Houston, Texas. So if you're ever in Houston, you have a little time on your hands, and you can only make maybe one liquor store to check out, I highly recommend NASA Liquor. Uh, go in there. Alex Lee's a great guy. He really does a, some really solid picks throughout his store. I mean, he does rum picks, bourbon picks, everything. Uh, but this one, this rye, was finished in Boulevardier casks. So now you're talking about getting, you know, a cocktail finish on a rye. And you start getting that complexity on top of the really nice floral, fruity rye uh, spice that we have. Anyway, retail pricing on it, I believe, was around $50.00. And like I said, he usually has something in there that's really amazing store picks. All right, moving on. New category, American Whiskey of the Year. Now, for American whiskeys, you know, I never really had a reason to have that in there. Um, you know, Smooth Ambler did an American Whiskey. It was pretty tasty one time, uh, but it didn't need to be shown in here. But this year, I really kind of ran into this uh, new Iron Root Republic distillery in Denison, Texas, and wow, they, the first time I had any of their spirit, it happened to be this bottle right here, Iron Root Icarus, all right? And Icarus is, it's, it's, it blew my mind, I'm telling you. It's a corn whiskey base, right? So they make a fantastic corn whiskey called Hubris, and they took that whiskey and put some of it in peated casks, peated whiskey casks, and some of it in port casks. Let it mature in there for a while, and then when they felt it, both of those were right, they blended them together to create this one. It is a smoky port influence with those dark fruits. And then the corn whiskey character, I don't know how it works. It's magic, I guess, but it really, really does work for only $60. Now, the thing to note is when it first released, it was kind of an experimental thing. They didn't have very much to go around, so it just sold out really fast. But they did a, they're doing a bigger 
release of it. Now, hopefully, I think they're saying it's going to come out mid-2018, probably, hopefully, April, May-ish, somewhere in there. So when you see Icarus on the shelf for $60, you need to pick that up. I know I will be doing that. Now, one other bottling of theirs that they do. This one, you might see it in a year or two, but I wanted to show it now because it's really, really amazing stuff. Iron Root Starka. And if you happen to be in Dallas, uh, there's a couple of stores that still have Iron Root Starka on the shelf, specifically Pogo's. Uh, but bottled at 106.9 proof. What is Starka? Starka is basically barrel-aged vodka. Okay. Well, when you barrel age vodka, what is, you know, if you use a whiskey mash bill for a vodka, you're making essentially a light whiskey, all right? That's what this is. It's a light whiskey under the Starka name. And the only reason it has a Starka name is because Pogo's, that store, commissioned them to make a barrel specifically of Starka. So they had to get the label approval, hence that's why it's called Starka. Now, it was a hit because that bottle was really tasty. The other barrel they did of it, which this actually is, was amazing so you know they're they're going to keep doing it they've laid down several more barrels of it i think that they're going to be ready like i said two years two and a half years and it's going to be called iron root light whiskey and i'm telling you if you've ever had the high west 14 light whiskey 14 year old that was tasty this starka this light whiskey sorry that's what they're gonna call it even better all right all right moving along another american whiskey that impressed me this year is this Clyde Mays 8-year-old, 117 proof cast strength. Now, this is Alabama-style whiskey. What is Alabama-style whiskey? Well, basically what they're telling us is that they add dried apple slices to the barrels of whiskey. And they let that kind of do its thing. Now, for the other Clyde May releases, I was just kind of like, ah, they're okay. But I, they wouldn't make it to this lineup. But this one does. And the reason is because at 117 proof, the apple that they put in there doesn't like come out like it. You don't really taste a ton of apple, but you get a little smidge of that note in there. But when I let it oxidize, oh, it just so, it became, it's very viscous already. And then you just let it soften up and it really drinks way below 117. It probably drinks more like about 105, 102, somewhere in there, 101 really really good if you happen to see it out there it retails for about eighty dollars it's worth picking up just remember to let it oxidize for a few months all right moving on canadian rye or canadian whiskey of the year is actually going to go to this lot 40 cast strength it was a canada only release it's 12 year old rye i think there's less than 5,000 bottles of it released for at least the initial uh, batch but the thing to note on it is that at 55%, retailing roughly about $60, I believe. It's really, really solid rye. It's pot distilled rye. Okay. Now, if you can't find this one, the Lot 40 cast strength, then maybe you can find the Canada Canadian Club 20-year-old. This one about the same price point, about $60, $70-ish, depending on the store. Another Canada-only rye. But they're really trying hard nowadays to compete with the bourbon and the other American whiskey markets because they kind of realize they've fallen behind. And so they're really working hard to give it good, big, bolsterous type flavor. And these two really kind of have that. All right. Brandy of the year. Now this one, kind of a lean year for brandy as well. Uh, when I was going through, you know, I had the some a couple of good Celt cognacs. The Tour de Monde was actually pretty tasty this year. I had a good American brandy, uh, that being the uh, Germain Robin uh, XO, was actually really, really tasty for the money. Uh, but the best one to me overall is going to be this Armagnac, coming to us from the Delord uh, release. It's a 25-year-old, so a 25-year-old Boss Armagnac Delord. Okay. Now, this one, when I first cracked it, it's a little punchy, so unlike cognac, that is, it's very um, elegant throughout, and then it has a really nice long finish. That's what you're looking for in a cognac, is mainly elegance and finesse on the finish. But this Armagnac gives you a little more punch in the face initially. It's a little more it's bolder in the dark fruits, and the spice was a little more intense. And the finish goes on, but it's, you know, it's a lot of some oak mixed in. This one needed to breathe. 
and I kind of already knew this because I've experimented a lot with the Delord Armagnacs and uh, the Marie Defoe's, which is along the similar same line. They love to oxidize. And I mean more than probably any other spirit I've run into with the exception of maybe the Octomore 6.3. But this one, you give it about three to four, uh, three to six months, somewhere in there to oxidize. And it really mellows out and just becomes elegant. It becomes elegant, but full flavor. So it really lasts on the finish. So if you happen to see the Delore 25 out there, crack it, give it time to breathe. It's going to be phenomenal. All right, moving along. Rum of the year, Havana Club 7 Añejo. Now the Havana Club 7, this is the real Havana Club, not the one you might see on U.S. shelves. The one on U.S. shelves says Puerto Rican rum. This is the Havana Club from Cuba. All right, don't not, they're not related. All right, they don't even taste any what similar. Uh, but the Havana Club 7 is a great rum for only $25, $30, somewhere in there. Excellent value. It's not too sweet. It's not too dry. Uh, it's just a great balanced rum. It mixes, it sips, it does everything. I actually enjoy the Selección de Maestros from Havana Club, but for the money, this is the value. This is the pick. All right, runners up for them. Plantation Overproof Rum, 69%. That is a big rum. But the unique thing about this one is it's not like, you know, 151 or anything like that where it's undrinkable or Everclear. This one is actually very, very viscous and semi, it's pretty sweet. It's actually, yeah, it's on the sweeter scale of things. Now, I'm not going to call it syrupy, but it's really sweet. But it's able to be sipped and enjoyed like that. Or you can mix cocktails with it. Whatever you want to do, for about $60, this plantation's uh, overproof is the way to go. Now, another bottling they did that equally impressed me this year is the Plantation uh, Stiggins Fancy Rum. Now, this one is a pineapple rum, but we're not talking imitation pineapple flavoring or anything like that. Here, they actually put in chunks of pineapple into the barrels of rum. So you get the, the, the flavor of the real pineapple without it being syrupy or fake tasting, anything like that for only $40. So that would be a good substitute or something. I just, when I tasted it, I felt like that needs to be in my collection. So I went ahead and added it. All right, tequila of the year is gonna go to Cava de Oro right here. It's an extra añejo. It mainly is in the uh, Mexican market. It doesn't really sell, I don't see it on US shelves. Uh, sells for about $130, so it is pretty expensive, but it is an extra añejo. So it's been a lot of time in the barrel. Uh, they do different bottlings. Some have beads on them. This happens to be the ceramic one uh, with the little characters on the bottle. But that's going to be my overall tequila of the year. Now, if you can't find that one or you're not going to Mexico, then I'd say this should be the tequila of the year, the Coralejo Reposado. This one sells for about $25, $30. And I have cracked open a fresh bottle of this and compared it to this bottle, which happens to be about 10 years old. There wasn't any difference. I was amazed at how much vanilla character was still in the new one. They, unlike a lot of other spirits that changed throughout the years, batch to batch, not this one. Cuadralejo Reposado, similar to Casa Noble, how they used to have that little vanilla going on. Similar, all right? Mezcal of the year, Tres Papalote. Tres Papalote Mezcal is bottled at 46%, retails at about $65. This is where mezcal is now moving and progressing towards more complex flavors. Uh, we're starting to get more fruits, more floral tones from the mezcal, and that's what this one has. Good vegetal agave, uh, but moving and progressing on. Next runner up, the Mayalin Borrego. Now the Mayalin Borrego has quite the ordeal when it's being made. It goes through the first distillation. After that, they add fruits, nuts, and spices to it and distill it again. And once that's distilled, then they actually do a third distillation where they hang a freshly butchered lamb leg in the still. So it's kind of along the same lines of pachuga where they do the chicken or uh, conejo where they do the rabbit and they do a, a deer and all sorts of stuff. So what it really adds, it doesn't add necessarily a meaty flavor to the mezcal but it adds a viscosity. I almost think the, the fats, the oils kind of 
just help coat a little better. And that's kind of what I noticed because both of these are not your typical heavy-handed, mezcal, earthy, smoky ones. You know, these are kind of more fruity, floral mezcals with the smoke balanced in there. All right. Vodka of the year, not much changed. Could have gone with Hammer and Sickle again or Beluga or Jewel of Russia. But this year, John Mark XO from France gets the nod. Really tasty vodka at about $50. For gin of the year, could have selected Ransom Old Time Gin, but we went ahead and went with Oxley. Oxley London Dry makes fantastic martinis. Um, it's just a really solid London Dry style. Anyway, that's going to be it for this year. If you don't see a bottle up here that you think should have been up here, feel free to leave it in the comments. We all learn from each other, and there's no wrong answers. Uh, so again, thank you for watching my video. Keep leaving all those great comments. Here's to a wonderful 2018. Have a good evening, and cheers.